programming is brought to you by Local Video Marketing. In association with Coach Chick's Mastermind Group and CoachChick.com. Hi there and welcome. This is Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RG, and we are almost at the end of the alphabet. Today is the letter V, and V is for vegetables. I'm going to be going over five vegetables to build muscle and strength. Beets. Did you know that studies have shown drinking beet juice before a workout increases blood flow to the muscles? This is especially true for the fast twitch muscle fibers which are needed for quick bursts of speed, such as for your fast break. Beets are also naturally rich in the chemical nitrates, which helps to increase stamina and decrease blood pressure. You can saute up these vegetables with some onions and garlic and toss them with some cooked pasta for a wonderful hockey strong dish. Spinach is rich in magnesium and iron. I'm sure you know that iron helps carry oxygen throughout the blood in the hemoglobin, and it carries blood throughout the muscles in the myoglobin. Believe it or not, three-fourths of a cup of cooked spinach contains 6.43 milligrams of iron. That's more iron than in a six-ounce hamburger and much less fat. The magnesium in spinach is important for muscle development energy production, and carbohydrate metabolism. Don't worry, 
Spinach has a mild flavor and mixes well in most smoothies. Hockey Mom RD recommends organic baby spinach leaves when you're trying to add them to your smoothies. Sweet potatoes. One cup of sweet potato cubes contains four times the amount of vitamin A in the form of beta carotene, which your body uses to make protein. Sweet potatoes are rich in fiber, which doesn't really make them a great choice really close to ice time, and they are a low glycemic vegetable. As a snack, you could try some baked sweet potato fries. Mushrooms are naturally occurring in vitamin D. If you choose one of these four species, mataki, chanterelle, morel, or shiitake. The number one is the mataki, where one cup is loaded with three times the RDA of vitamin D. Vitamin D is needed to maintain healthy bone, and recent studies suggest vitamin D may help to increase muscle strength. You could start off by trying to add mushrooms to salads, soups, and stir-fried dishes. And last but not least, those stoplight vegetable peppers. Green, yellow, and red bell peppers are rich in vitamin C. Vitamin C helps the body burn fat and turn carbohydrates into fuel. Muscle tissue loves vitamin C and uses that vitamin C from the foods that you eat to process a fatty acid named carnitine that's essential for muscle growth and development. A snack idea, you could add a half a cup of peppers to a side of a sandwich, and this will provide your body with more than 300% of the RDA for vitamin C. Want to learn more about youth ice hockey nutrition? Visit www.hockeymomrd.com and check out my Create a Championship Plate virtual course. If you have emails, feel free to email me at kim at hockeymomrd.com. Here's to your skaters' success this season and in the future. Thanks for listening today. This is Kim Lucar, Hockey Mom RD. Happy skating till next time. All right, you ready for the 12 best exercises to go ahead and get started with when you're first implementing a resistance band program? I'm gonna bring them to you right now. All right, so let's get ready to go. You know, first one we wanna do is we wanna train our trunk and there's two exercises I think you need to go ahead and get started with. First one is a simple plank. You wanna take the band, you got two options, put it on your back, double, or my suggestion is start out with it single by putting it around this way, hook it onto your hand, put it right on the small of your back, drop on down, and hold that plank right there. Keep the pressure against the palms of your hands, and you got a plank. Very easy exercise to get started with. From there, we want to add a little bit of mobility. So we're going to go into a mountain climber. Keep your belly button tight and go into a simple mountain climber as your second exercise for your trunk. From there, let's move on to now hitting our back. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drop down. We're gonna stay on the floor for this one. We're gonna hook it around our feet. Now make sure you've got your feet separated apart. Hands go through the loops so you can pull with your mid back. We're gonna go into what we call seated rows. Now, a couple things, keep those feet apart. Push against the band to engage your glutes. So now as you're pulling, your glutes are engaged and you can keep a nice upward posture. We don't want any slouching. We don't want any leaning back. From there, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna come up into a standing position. We're gonna put the band behind us. But now we're gonna move it up into our shoulder blade area. You can see I've got it up onto my scapula. I'm gonna take my hand through the loop and hook it onto the index finger between my index finger and thumb. Through the loop, index finger and thumb. Why? Because I'm gonna go into chest presses and I want resistance through the full range of motion. So I'm gonna knock it out, going through the full range of motion. From there, we're gonna drop down. We're gonna step on it with one foot. We'll go with our left foot. We're gonna step through, and we're gonna put it up into this position with our hands shoulder width apart, so we can go ahead and do an incline 
chest press. Notice I keep the band apart, my hands apart, the band is not rubbing on my arms, and I'm really engaging my mid-back right along with my anterior shoulder girdle. From there, I'm just gonna step out of it. I'm gonna go into a pull apart. Two ways you can do this. You can stagger yourself and go single pull apart. Make sure the band is about 12 inches between your hand, maybe 18 at the most. Grip it a little bit, but most importantly, if you keep tension on the band, you will be able to pull it apart without any issues of the band sliding. What we don't want is the band getting loose. So always keep a little tension on it. If you want more challenge, you take it out, you wrap it around one hand, wrap it around the other, you're now about 12 inches apart, and you can do a pull apart with a double resistance, all right? So from there, we're gonna go ahead, that's pull parts. Now we're gonna drop down into our shoulder press, and we're gonna go right here. Again, shoulder width apart with my hands, up and apart. Get those hands apart a little bit. That'll engage your scapula and also allow you to go ahead, clear your shoulder girdle so we don't get that impingement issue into the shoulder. From there, let's move right into high pulls. Once again, shoulder width apart pull, up and pull apart. Why do I pull apart? To engage my shoulder blades. So it's a simple pull apart. Make sure, lead with your elbows. Bring your elbows up first. That's the cue to getting that exercise going. From there, we're just gonna slide down, hook our thumbs through the band, fingers over top, pull the band apart a little bit, and you're going hammer curl. Now most people get in here with them. Don't go in there. Keep them shoulder width apart, hammer curl. Notice, knees are bent, hips are bent, and we're in a great athletic position, and we're just using the shoulder and the bicep to go ahead and engage the hammer curl. From there, we're going right into triceps. Couple things you can do, but most way you can grip it, put your fingers through the band now, not your thumbs, bring it up to the shoulder. Set it on the shoulder when you're ready to go. It's just simply right there, pressing through. That is how you're gonna go ahead and do a tricep press. So, we got core, we got back, we got chest, we got shoulders, we got arms. Let's finish with legs. You know where I'm going here. We're going front squat. Put that band up onto your shoulders, elbows up, front squat. All the way down, all the way up, knocking out that exercise, just like that. Now, I'm gonna keep it right there, because I'm just gonna step out, and I'm right into a split squat. So now, I can knock out a split squat on my right, but here's the deal. When you switch it up, just step in with your left, step out with your right, you don't have to change it. Band goes out in front and you're split squatting left. Transitions are huge. Make sure you practice them and work on them. Guys, there's your 12 exercises that you should go ahead and get started with when you're implementing a resistance band training strength conditioning program. I remember well those words by Coach Shiro upon his return from studying the old Soviet method of training. Actually, the words and the concept so intrigued me that I ultimately traveled to Moscow to see for myself. My USSR studies were a lot of years ago, but the lessons I learned 
not to mention my greatly changed outlook, still carry over in just about every phase of my current work. And despite the fact that I learn lots about improving a player's explosive strength and conditioning back then, I've greatly expanded on their idea of off-ice training on dry land, so much so that it's going to take me several installments to share it all with you. Also, as you get to observe some of these alternative training ideas, you're probably going to come to the same realization that I eventually did, and that some hockey qualities can actually be enhanced better or more conveniently away from the ice. Now, before I go any further, I want to share an important modal learning principle that pretty much governs this area of study. For the theory of transfer deals with how any given form of practice might transfer to the learning of a desired skill. And in a shortcut version, it suggests that a positive transfer occurs if the learning of one skill aids the learning of another. A negative transfer occurs if one skill conflicts with the learning of another. And a neutral transfer occurs when one skill has no bearing on the learning of another. It's also helpful to know that the closer one skill is to another, the more it transfers positively to the desired skill. Doing my best to simplify all of this, let me suggest that any hockey shooting action is likely to positively help one's eventual shooting motion for a game. Of course, the transfer of skills would be altered if a player shot regulation pucks at some times, weighted ones at other times, and lightweight ones at yet other times. This because the player's shooting accuracy can be negatively affected by the changing weights. However, heavy pucks might bring about some slight strength gains, while firing light ones could aid in developing quicker movement. Finally, studies show that the frequent changing of practice settings can, in fact, improve one's opportunities for a positive transfer. And this is awesome news for anyone interested in training away from the ice. At least a generation of players have been raised on the belief that specialization produces the best end results. In other words, the more a hockey player trains at or plays hockey, the better he or she will become. And this makes sense according to what we know about the theory of transfer. However, more recently, some experts in the physical sciences have noted that the era of specialization has also produced far fewer true athletes. Or in my own words, I might say that specialization has brought about a generation of pretty decent robots. I highly recommend reviewing this information since it's going to form the basis for almost everything we'll explore from here onward. Be sure to have at least a general understanding of skill transfer. Appreciate the benefits of changing practice settings and seriously consider the advantages of being an all-around athlete. For Pack 2 is going to be all about athleticism.
Nice, it's good. Nice, guys, good. Nice wide stride, right on. Good work, Remy. This has been a local video marketing production. We hope you've enjoyed this, and that you've picked up a number of great hockey tips. Please do tell some friends about these shows, and let the contributing coaches know how much you appreciate them.